Hey guys, so I've been asked some kind of interesting questions trying to clear up some confusion about when to use a conjugate with limits as x approaches positive or negative infinity. So I have three examples here that I think are going to be really stellar for helping you kind of sort out some of these things. So um, I've got these two examples, which is kind of a comparison of different techniques that you can use. And then this last one is something, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but this is something that just as x goes to negative infinity, this is a weird thing that you gotta think about. So let's just jump right into these. So starting with this first one, so I wanna, I wanna show the conjugate trick here and just kind of refresh your memory on it. So the idea here is um, what happens as x approaches infinity for this? Now you might at first just say, oh, it just goes to infinity because you know it's, it's not a fraction and you know it's x squared and so whatever. But in reality, you kind of have to think about how this is playing along with this because you're kind of taking the square root of this thing to the fourth. So it's, it's kind of like in some ways you could think about like the x squareds are, are almost like kind of canceling themselves out. And it, you can't simplify this square root, but you do have to think about how these two things kind of play along with one another. So we actually can't tell what is happening as x approaches infinity. And in reality, there is actually an asymptote here. So I want to show you kind of how do you work with this. So you, you since you can't figure this out, what you're going to use is you're going to use the conjugate. So I am just going to straight up multiply by the conjugate. So this is x squared plus the square root of x to the fourth plus 3. So just like this. Okay, now maybe you want to pause the video here and just work this out on your own and then hit play when you're ready. So I'm going to work this out as well. So I'll, I'll just kind of zip through the details here. Okay, so I've shown all my work here so you can kind of compare, um, compare to it. But I multiplied everything with the conjugate and I went ahead and I foiled everything out. And so now I'm just kind of working all this out. I need, I need a little bit more space. Let me make that. And so in the end, what I end up getting here is this problem. So just negative three over all of this stuff, which, so now that I just have X's really in the denominator. So, so this is kind of interesting, right? So the X's on top dropped out, which is kind of in line with what I was talking about at the very beginning, right? Like we, we know that this and this are kind of like canceling each other out. And now we actually see that when we multiply by the conjugate, how those things cancel out. But now what I'm really left with is this problem where I just have X's in the denominator. And so since I just have X's in the denominator, this whole thing's just going to end up equaling zero. So in this particular instance, this, this came out pretty simplified, pretty straightforward. And now what I want to do is I want to compare this to this other example. So I want to point something out here before we get too far ahead of this. So notice why this example is significantly different from the last one. So in this last one, it's not like I could have simplified the square root anymore. But in this one, if you are careful and you pay attention, you'll notice you can totally simplify the square root more. And so let's say that you didn't notice that and you just wanted to multiply by the conjugate again. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay. So I worked everything out. I, I omitted some of the foiling, but I, I kind of just jumped to what the answer sh uh, should be. So this is very different from the last one, right? So the last one we had like a pretty clear cut resolution to finish this off. And this one, so you'll notice that it's still pretty complicated and, and we can't necessarily just tell like, you know, what is the answer going to be? Although the one thing that we can definitely see, right, is that we've got, so this, this X to the six in the top, so that's the dominating term. So it definitely looks like this is probably going to positive or negative infinity. So, so if you went this route, you could totally just make your conclusion from here. Like if I just start trying to put in uh, my infinities, right? So I can see here the dominating term is up here on top. 
um, this is all negative. This looks like this is going to negative infinity. You can you can make this conclusion, and if you want to make it a little bit stronger, what you could do is you, you could you know divide by the highest term in the denominator, kind of that same trick that we do before, and you would get that this equals negative infinity. So if you use the conjugate here, that's totally fine. But I want to present now the alternative way that you, you could have done this. So let me clear some space. Okay, so the alternative thing to notice here is that right here, you could factor out x to the fourth. So it's just another way of approaching the problem, and it's good to kind of see different ways to do it because if nothing else, it can give you a little bit more like surety in your, your answer. So there I've factored out my x to the fourth, and so now I can actually evaluate the square root of x to the fourth, right? So if I did that, this would become x squared minus, the square root of x to the fourth is just x squared, and then I'm still left with this guy here. And now look, I can actually factor the x squareds out. So if I do that, I get the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared, and then this is going to be 1 minus the square root of x squared plus 3. And so now this, this kind of presents an alternative way to think through this. So let me clear some space. And so now what we can do is we can really break up the, the two limits and, and think through this thought exercise. So I've got this limit as x approaches infinity of x squared, multiplying that by the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus x squared plus 3. Now with this one, this, this, is, this is actually going to be the same answer. This part here, so I'll use a color here, this is going to go to infinity. But this one here, so what's going to happen here? So ultimately this is going to end up going to, this x squared is going to go to infinity, and then there's this negative here. So this whole thing's going to end up going to negative infinity. So you get a negative times a positive, so we actually get the same conclusion. So um, it's just, an, it's maybe a little bit of a faster way to get to the same answer if you if you catch it, but you know, if you use the conjugate, it, it's fine. So I just wanted to kind of compare those two techniques because I had that question. Okay, so now for this last one. So this one actually is a little bit tricky because we have x approaching negative infinity. And th this one's just kind of a, a really tricky one. So, so here's the first thing we wanna do. We wanna multiply everything by the conjugate, right? So let me go ahead and, and do that. Okay, so I've worked everything out to the, the first points. I've kind of boiled everything out. Let's simplify this one more so um, I will clear some space. And now I can finish this. So now I'm looking at this and it's like, all right, what, what's the value going to be? So it's not quite as straightforward as the very first problem that we looked at, and we're going to have to divide by the dominating term which in this case would just be x. So I'm going to divide everything by x, but here's, here's kind of a weird thing that happens. So let me clear some space and set this up. Okay, so I've kind of broken this all out because we, we know a lot of this, dividing everything by x, and you might even be pretty familiar with the trick that happens at this point. So I want to divide x into this radical, but I can't just do it as is, so I have to kind of manipulate this x. So instead what I want to do is I want to multiply this radical by the square root of x squared. Okay, so the square root of x squared, which is equivalent to x, right? However, the fact that this is going to negative infinity, we have to be really careful with this, and we actually need the fact that this is, this is negative infinity being kind of that this is going to negative infinity, we need that represented in this multiplication. So it's actually not totally complete to just take the square root of x. What I want to do is I want to make sure that the negativeness of this is represented, so I'm going to change this sign. So feel free to leave me some, some comments if that doesn't make sense. But that, that's basically what we've got to do. We've got to manipulate this sign so that we capture the negativeness of this term so that I can then manipulate this term into 
the square root of x squared because the square root of x squared by itself would normally be positive, but we know that this is actually supposed to have some negativeness in it only because this is going to negative infinity. So this is like a really specific trick. So this is what I'm going to now kind of push into this radical here. And so what this is gonna look like then is, I, so I'm gonna just finish kind of manipulating this. So let's see, this radical now, we can kind of rewrite it like this. Let's see, get rid of that part. And now I can divide everything by x squared like this. So I've, I've kind of used this right here. Okay, so I hope that that makes a sense, but if it doesn't, leave me a comment. And if I have to make more videos to kind of break this down a little bit more, I am so happy to. Okay, so now let's keep going. I'll make some space. And now we can finish out the simplification. So I'll show you all that. And my bad, I just realized I was supposed to have an X here, so I'll, I'll put that back, my bad. Um, okay, so now I'll actually simplify this. Okay, so now that I've simplified this, if you were kind of sitting on the fence of like, ah, oh, this trip kind of made sense, but it kind of didn't. So the other thing I wanna point out here now is like the negativeness of this, like where our limit is going to, it's it's being captured really in the rest of this problem, right? So like, like this part here, this going to negative infinity, we are technically picking up the negativeness of this, except it's just gonna end up going to zero. So it like, Normally when we divide by x, that gets captured everywhere and we don't normally have to worry about this, but in this particular instance, just we had to make sure that it got captured in what we were manipulating this radical by. So hopefully it makes a little bit more sense now. And so I can see now this is going to zero, this is going to zero, this is going to zero. So what am I left with? All of this is gonna be negative five over five plus five, so ultimately this is actually gonna equal just negative one half. And so that is that one. So that was kind of a tricky one, huh? Um, so like I said, guys, feel free to leave me a comment um, if that was helpful or not helpful. Um, I'm really happy to try to explain it other ways. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.